my understanding the last time I saw reports on this was that revenue decline had been somewhere in the ballpark of 50 to 60 percent. Apparently, 84 percent decrease in revenue since Elon Musk took over, which makes sense to me because, guys, I don't know about you. I am like only getting four or five advertisements now on Twitter. Like when I sc like literally if I just scroll and whatever, it's literally like the same one will show up eight or nine times. It's pretty dire. It's pretty bad. Apparently, Mark Cuban is interested in buying Twitter. Yeah, save me slightly better billionaire. I shouldn't say that. Mark Cuban is legions better than Elon Musk. It's like the fact that they're both billionaires is is almost like inconsequential relative to their demeanor and political positions, right? Like in terms of morality, Mark Cuban is closer to any of us than Elon Musk is to Mark Cuban purely by how Hitlerite and how stupid Elon Musk is. But, you know, I don't think it's going to happen anyway. I mean, Elon would have to approve of the sale. But yeah, um, the concern, I suppose, is that Elon might have to sell off stock in order to save the company, which would devalue the stock, of course, because if you sell it, you increase the uh, supply, which, you know, lowers the price of it, which would hurt everyone, including Twitter. He's not actually what he said is being misrepresented. He said Elon would never sell it, but he'd buy it if he would, but it'll never happen. Ah, well, you know, Elon Musk initially wasn't going to buy Twitter, right? He fronted a deal and then was forced by law to adhere to it. So, hey, you know, let's just, we just need to get Mark Cuban drunk and get him to like sign the paperwork that he can't then back out of. That's all I'm asking for, you know. Does it still have stock? Thought he took it fully private. No, no, no. It's it's still a stock. It's just that he owns it. Like he he owns a majority of the stock. It's not it's not delisted. Is my I'm wait. Am I incorrect in this? Twitter hasn't been delisted from the market. It's just that he owns so much of the stock personally that he functionally controls it entirely himself. It's not public. It's still public. No, it's not public. Okay, thank you. It's been delisted. Gotcha. It's delisted. It's not open to the public. So that would mean then that this is this would mean opening it up. Or would these be private sales that aren't on the market? Yeah, that's right. You can do that, right? You can you can privately sell stock of a company without publicly listing it. You'd be yeah, you'd be selling it to like private equity or whatever. It says Tesla stock. Wouldn't this crash the stock value of the company? The the Elon Musk, essentially the front man for Tesla, selling billions of dollars of stock to save another company that is hemorrhaging money would not only devalue Tesla stock substantially, but it would also stoke fears that he'll just do it again in the future, right? Like, think about it. Twitter being down on revenue isn't just a one-time loss of money. It's a constant loss of money. Fortune notes that while no one knows how much longer Twitter slash X will survive, Musk previously stated could face bankruptcy due to what he calls an advertiser boycott which is actually just companies exercising their rights in the free market to promote their brands wherever they see fit. Right, 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 right. We get it. The woke answer, the woke answer where you're allowed to invest wherever you want. I, it, it really does make me wonder, though, at what point would he really give it up? It's insane that Tesla didn't tank after he interviewed Trump and basically denied that climate change is an important issue. It makes me wonder how much Elon is actually like benefiting Tesla as a public rep for it at this point. You know, do you think he ever would give it up, though? I genuinely don't know. Like, Elon is very insecure. I feel like he would be willing to bear quite a bit of, quite a bit of, of like financial loss if it means getting to keep being the meme guy. You know? He's very narcissistic. Maybe he just drags it down with him, like indefinitely. You see bits of this? 11 WTF moments from Character Limit, the book about how Elon Musk destroyed Twitter. Okay, wait, hold on. I saw I saw some of these. That's fine. Tesla's bad for the EV market. True. Right when he paid fifty two thousand dollars to sleuth on the guy who saved those Thai uh, children's soccer team. Right, right, right. His drug habits almost led to an intervention. Potential partnership with infamous fraudster Sam Backman Freed. Grind finds out her next baby's name is already taken. Demanding that Twitter help pay for Musk's acquisition. Character limit traces Musk's years-long grudge against another Silicon Valley billionaire, Mark Zuckerberg, which dates at least as far back as a statement he made in 2016 about a SpaceX rocket that exploded on the launch pad with one of Facebook's satellites on board. <laughs> his vendetta partially explains Musk's first comment upon hearing his costly Twitter deal has officially closed. Quote, he slammed his fist on the table and let out what could only be described as a battle cry. Zuck! Musk shouted. 
John Chen, the Twitter VP on hand to witness this outburst, couldn't fathom what the moment had to do with Musk's enemy. At any rate, the response sharply contrasted with what Musk had said when Twitter initially accepted his offer. I'm going to regret this for the rest of my life. Holy shit, that's so soy. Another book on Elon Musk buying Twitter is called Extremely Hardcore. Is that sarcastic? Musk had basically one idea for how to increase Twitter's revenue while making it less dependent on the advertisers that were already leaving the site. Get rid of the old verification system that assigned blue check marks to notable figures, institutions, and media, and make people pay eight a month for the badge as well as premium features. Product teams, meanwhile, were scrambling to put together more features that could potentially shore up the company's finances. One poorly conceived proposal was for, quote, paid direct messaging which would allow users to DM celebrities for a fee. Quote, mock-ups presented to Trump to Musk's entourage showed a user paying a few dollars to message Post Malone with Twitter taking a cut of the proceeds. Perhaps someone pointed out this was a good way to drive celebrities off the site because the project didn't move forward from there. That's really good. I like that. Oh, this is the one that I saw. These two are the ones that I saw. Musk isn't too forgiving of employees who criticize him or give him answers he doesn't like, as many episodes in the book illustrate. In one case, he was enraged about a decline in engagement on his tweets and abruptly fired an engineer who suggested that the public's interest in him had fallen off since the Twitter acquisition closed several months prior. But another employee, a data scientist who had already made up his mind to resign after turning over memos on how to run Twitter more effectively, was even more blunt with Musk. He explained that he had been excited about the takeover, but was disheartened when, just weeks later, Musk shared blatant partisan misinformation about an assault by a home intruder on then House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband, Paul Pelosi. Quote, It's only really like the 10th percentile of the adult population who'd be gullible enough to fall for this, end quote. The the employee told Musk, who shot back, you. The departing data scientist left with a piece of advice. I hope you'll declare bankruptcy and let someone else run the company. He was mad that Joe Biden's Super Bowl tweet got more likes than his. Can you imagine being this guy? This is one of the reasons why I encourage you guys to not get too disheartened by, like, Elon Musk's tweet getting a bunch of likes or whatever, not only does the algorithm boost everything that he and other right-wing creators do, he has bots. Like, an insane number of bots. It's fake engagement. It doesn't mean anything. Not to say he gets no legitimate engagement, but, like, you should never, ever, ever take anything from that. This is my favorite one. Following a series of disastrous policy changes, Musk decided to hold an informal performance review for himself using one of his favorite Twitter tools, the polling feature. Quote, should I step down as head of Twitter, I will abide by the results of this poll, end quote, he tweeted in December 2022 before embarking on a flight from Qatar to London. When he landed, he found that, quote, 57.5% of the more than 17.5 million accounts that had voted were calling for him to, de- to resign. Between this rejection and the plummeting value of Tesla stock, Musk became withdrawn and unresponsive, with those who did manage to talk to him worrying that he was, quote, in the throes of a manic event. Speaking with En Confidant, quote, Musk choked up and began to doubt his ability to run the company in light of the poll results, saying, quote, I'm never going to recover from this. He's so f- funny. He's so f- funny, dude. It's remarkable. Anyway, I mean, if, if, Elon Musk's mismanagement of Twitter continues to the point where it starts like bleeding Tesla as well. That's totally fine by me. An 84% revenue collapse. That is insane. The Yahoo Finance article even says its revenue has dropped by an incredible 84%, which I mean, me too. How can you be so rich but so depressed? Trust me, there's no relationship between being wealthy and being mentally stable at all. <laughs> 